Hello everybody, how is it going? My name is Lucas and today we are going to be checking out the Schecter SLS Elite 7 string guitar and guys, this is your first time here or if you've been here before, make sure you are subscribed. I do gear reviews, mixing tutorials and I do giveaways from time to time. I don't want you to miss any of that cool stuff so make sure you are subscribed. So without further ado, let's jump right in and check out the SLS Elite. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to play a few audio examples for you. We're going to get in the groove of things and I'm going to let you see how this guitar sounds and I'm going to talk about all of the different uh, quirks and features that this guitar has. So let's jump right in and get some sound examples. <laughs> some sound examples I'm going to read off some specs for you on the guitar so it is a solid body guitar it has a swamp ash body it has a flamed uh, maple top the body finish on it is gloss the color that you see that is antique fade burst it has a multiply neck made up of maple walnut and paduk i think i said that right if i didn't let me know in the comments down below as an ultra thin c neck it is a neck through Guitar joint, it has a 12 to 16 compound radius. The fretboard is ebony. The inlays are abalone offset with some reverse dots. It has 24 extra jumbo stainless frets. Scale length is 26.5 and nut width is 1.889. And it has an Ernie Ball compensated nut. It has some Schecter locking tuners and it has a hip shot through body bridge. And it has uh, one volume knob, which is a push pull, and one tone, which is a push pull, and it has a three way pickup switch. Getting into the electronics of the guitar, it does come with Fishman Moderns. I am not the biggest fan of the Fishman Moderns, but that is absolutely okay because I just bought some Fishman Toast and soap bar pickups that slide right in here, and it was super easy to install. I've had the Fishmans on like three, I've had the Tosins, excuse me, on three other guitars. I absolutely love these pickups. They don't fight me. I can get the tone I want right straight away. And I was able to swap them right in. And that was a big thing when I was looking for a guitar. And by the way, you can get this in a Floyd version too. You can get them in six string versions and you can get them in Floyd versions too, by the way. I just wanted to throw that out there. I was searching for a new seven string guitar and I had a couple of criteria. I needed locking tuners, which is a must for me, and I needed stainless frets. Those are the two things I was absolutely not compromising on. The Schecter had that. I was also looking for uh, one that already came with Fishman, um, Fish, a Fishman setup in it because I really like those pickups, like I said before, and I was looking to swap uh, the Fishmans that I wanted in it and it's super easy. 
the Schecter also had that. And another bonus feature that it has is it has the truss rod adjustment at the bottom of the neck on, on a truss, on a, on a wheel like this. Every guitar should have this. I love it down here. It makes adjusting the neck super, super easy. You don't have to fight with it at the top of the neck. You don't have to take off the neck like some older guitars to adjust it. It, it makes things super, super easy. Um, I typically like my seven strings to be hardtail. But like I said, if you want a Floyd, which Floyd's, Floyd's are great. A lot of people don't like them, but I do like them. You can get that in a Floyd version if you want. Also, so specs hunting-wise, this was one of the only production guitars that I could find that came with locking tuners, stainless frets, had Fishman's right from the factory so I could uh, swap swap them right out uh, very very easily and the price the price on these are are not not insane they're they're right at that that's at that sweet point now it's not super cheap and it's not blazingly expensive but it's right at that good midpoint and i did order this one from sweetwater and it came in set up absolutely immaculately to tell you the truth i did not have to touch it setup wise it played absolutely perfectly and it's been great. And I've even changed the strings on it. It came with some 10 to 62s. I all, all custom orders from Kurt Mang and Coded's. Put that on here. I have a 10 to 64. And it absolutely handled it. I mean, the string gauge didn't change all that much. I did not have to adjust the neck. It's been absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, the locking the locking tuners are good, by the way. Uh, they're not... Let me put it to, to you this way. They're not the... They're not absolute garbage, but they're not like super expensive top tier. They're, they they're you know they're they're kind of like toward toward the high end right right there in the middle. They are Schecter locking tuners. I don't know who makes them for Schecter, but like I said, they're locking. They're good. I've already changed the strings on them, and they've uh, they've performed well for me when I did when I did change them. When I did swap out the pickups, I did happen to take a peek at the routes themselves. The routes look really good. They do actually have standoffs for the screws in the bottom which is really cool to see. Uh, so they they use screws that don't have actual like uh, pointy tips in them because they use standoff, so the tips are cut off, if that makes any sense. So you can swap pickups as much time as you want. You won't chew up the wood. You don't have to worry anything about that. Uh, another thing I forgot to say is that I did swap out the uh, strap holders, and I put on the Dunlop um, lockings that I've, I've had on like, every guitar. That actually went super smooth. Opening up the control cavity, things are very neat in there. The soldering does look very good. I am by no means a soldering expert, so if you see some things in there that aren't up to snuff, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be really interested to see if anyone sees anything. Um, the wires are tie wrapped. It's um it's nice and neat in there. The cavity itself is not um lined. The um electromagnetic uh paper i think you call it it's not shielded that's what i look at it's not exactly shielded but that's fine it's spray painted black it's the same thing um in the routes for the pickups it's uh it's coated with black which it makes things look um nice and tidy doesn't look like anything was rushed in there it looks great alluding to what i was talking about earlier you do have a three-way blade in there i am more than likely going to swap in a five-way blade so that way i can have my voice three those and pickups which i'm going to eventually end up um, leaving in here because like I've explained before I don't exactly get along with the moderns but that is the beauty of it I know some of you are probably like well why are you going to buy a guitar just to swap the pickups well because I what I like I don't say be, be an asshole and be like yeah because I can and just it's it's what I'm going to do and I can I can sell off the moderns and recoup the price a little bit of the money that I got um, investing um, in the Tosins and, and you know what that's that's absolute that's that's fine that's cool small little rant don't criticize people if they buy guitars and swap the pickups. It's like buying a, a car or a truck and, and swapping the tires. A lot of the times, you'll luck out maybe sometimes and you get some really good stock tires and you keep them for a while before you have to put on new ones. And sometimes the stuff that comes from the factory is really bad. So you swap on the tires that you like. So small little bitty rant. Just stop stop criticizing people for doing stuff with their, with their own gear. They're free to do whatever they want. Anyway, sorry about that. Let's bring it back around for the battery compartment uh you when i was filming the b-roll for it, you, you um getting the compartment open is kind of tough which is a good thing because if you're thrashing around on stage and you don't want it to come undone it's tight in there uh, when you get the when you get the the door open and put the fishman battery packs in here i don't know if you'd have enough space to do it uh in the cavity i think you might to be to be honest if you kind of maybe i don't know 
uh, but you do have that option, but I don't think you'd, you'd be able to do it on here just because of um, constraints. But you have the battery compartment. The batteries last a long time as long as you don't leave your guitar plugged in all the time. Sticking with the back of the guitar, I want to talk about the neck a little bit. Uh, the ultra thin C neck is absolutely great. It says that it's thin, but it's not like Ibanez wizard thin. It's not like super, super flat to where it like hurts your hand. Uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of perfect for me because it doesn't hurt your hands. You have enough uh, girth there to like support your hand, but it's also not thick like a baseball bat. So let's kind of get talked about some things that I don't exactly like about the guitar. There's not that many of them, but there is a few of them. Um, I found a few little errors here and there. Uh, by the way, this guitar is made in Korea. I found a few little imperfections on here. I don't exactly know if they kind of like miss this or whatever, but right underneath the, like right, right by the neck up, neck pickup, right by the 24 fret, um, it kind of looked like they missed a little bit of the, 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 the top clear. I think when they were clearing the top, putting the gloss on, I think they missed it a little bit right there. I mean, there is a little bit of, um, it's not very much, but there's a little bit of the binding that kind of got um, on the neck a little bit. And I have um, two little bitty scuff marks. They're not very deep, but it's like almost like it's cut. Um, it's right around the 12, 13, about the 15th fret right here. You have two little bitty nicks in it. One is kind of on the binding of the fretboard, and the other one is kind of a little bit um, past it. But that is not really... Um, all that bad, and that's really all I could find. All of my frets are straight. All the frets ends, frets ends are good. Nothing is stabbing me. I don't have any crooked frets or anything that's um, knocked in or anything like that. Uh, one little extra weird thing I kind of wanted to cover. If you're trying to decide if you this is this is strictly seven string speaking, but if you're trying to decide between um, the KM7 hybrid and the SLS Elite. Um, I went through the same thing. I'll throw a vid. I have a video that I did. I'll put it at the end if you want to check that out. Basically, if you buy the Keith Marrow Signature Seven or even the Six, you can't really swap pickups out of there unless you stay strictly passive. Because if you get any um, active pickups or anything that's covered or it's kind of you know it's like shaped like a like a pure square, it's not going to work for the routes because the routes are cut very tight and neat for your typical passive sized pickup. So you would have to get either a Fishman that's passive size that would fit in there, or you would have to completely rip everything out and put another passive size pickup in there. Just putting that out there. If you buy an SLS Elite that has soap bars, you can go to town and you can go crazy. So any any active that uses the Quick Connect system, maybe that EMG or any Fishman, you can swap them right in. You can go to town and it work absolutely just fine. So the major, major thing that I don't necessarily like about this guitar is going to be the forearm contour. I'm kind of a major stickler for forearm contour. And as you can see on here, it's 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 straight. There's no contour where your forearm rests. It is arch top, so I guess that kind of helps uh, a little bit. It's better than nothing. But there is no forearm contour. So I kind of have to alter the way I play a little bit. But it, it honest, to tell you the truth, it honestly hasn't been that bad. I like... I don't own a Les Paul. I don't really like single cuts that much. And for majority of my life, I've avoided guitars that don't have like some type of, uh, it's not like beveled or it's like relaxed right here. Like one of my favorite guitars of all time is the JP6, the original ones where it has like the, it's like a big bowl it's cut out for your form. That guitar is so comfortable. This doesn't have that because the way I play, I'll kind of show you, um, for most of the time, like I, I hang my like arm on the guitar like I kind of like just plop it down and I hang on it right here and sometimes I can like it stabs you especially on this one if if you don't really adjust the way you play what I had to kind of do is I have to kind of like tilt the guitar a little bit it's really not that bad if I tilt it a little bit kind of to the side um it's it's good for my form that's for my picking hand for my fretting hand um it's been comfortable it's been great um I haven't had any strain haven't had any pain um it's been great even with tilting it now um if I'm gonna be doing like blazing leads and sweeps and shit like that, I'm gonna need uh, my classical foot pedal, which I don't know what the hell I did with. I need to find it. The the forearm contour thing, it, it's really big for me, but surprisingly enough, I like the guitar. I, I like the guitar enough that I'm not gonna send it back because I did order 
kind of like what was talking about before. I got the KM7. I couldn't swap the Tosins that I wanted into it, so I ended up sending it back, and I got the SLS, SLS Elite, which I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely happy with this guitar. It, it's been great. Um, I, it, I, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, for the money, for the money with the specs, these are some of the best guitars out there. I did hunt for a very long time to get the specs specifically that I what I wanted. Like I said, a 26.5 inch guitar. I did not want a seven string with a 25.5 inch scale. I just was not going back to that. I'd rather a longer scale. I'm not doing a whole lot of shreddy stuff on here. And even if you do, it's really not all that bad. The specs in here are great. The the fin I love the finish in here. Um, I got to pick my top from Streetwater. Um, I really like the way it came out. This guitar was great. I only found two little bitty small um, imperfections on it, which, like I said, those weren't deal breakers for me. And like I said, the only thing I didn't really like was the forum contour, but I just adjusted the way I played, and um, it's fantastic. Now, if you were hunting for the six-string version of these, it's a little bit different. You can swap any pickup you want into it because the routes are, you know, they're in a complete square. Uh, if you're looking at the KM6 Mark III Hybrid, yeah, the routes are kind of cut kind of tight like the km7 so it's kind of the same situation there but overall guys for the money stainless stainless frets locking tuners fishman setup trash rod adjustment at the back uh, a great neck there's a lot to like about this guitar even if you're not feeling it, if you want more forum contour you want something a little bit better uh the Schecter reapers that they just launched i just well, actually as of 2023 is i'm feeling it's february 21st I just launched some new Reapers. Uh, they have a bevel right here, which is a little bit better. And even the new John Brown signature, check to the Tao. I think I pronounced it right. It's T-A-O. T -A -O. Put a bevel on there, so that is going to be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, he has the thin U-neck as opposed to the thin C-neck on it, so that is a little bit different. But if you aren't necessarily feeling the SLS Elite, you have the Reapers to choose from, and you do have the John Brown to choose from. And they're all kind of the same and different at the same time. It's just a little bit of things tweaked here and there. Guys, if you stuck around this far, thank you so much. I know I did a lot of talking. I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. You have a lot of choices to make and you should just spend it with me. And I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up. If you have any more questions that I didn't cover, uh, let me know in the comments down below and I will answer them for you to the best of my uh, ability. If you aren't subscribed, you really should. Lots of cool stuff going on here. And guys, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.